And here we're going to take a little closer look at photochemical reactions. In this case, we're going to see the practical application of photochemical reactions. Again, what that means is that a chemical reaction takes place because of an influx of a quantum amount of energy. And it's this exact property of these chemical reactions that actually allows life on Earth to exist. And this is not an exaggeration of the truth because let's say that here's Mother Earth, the surface of the Earth, and we're blanketed by a nice layer of atmosphere. Of course, the predominant gases in the atmosphere is nitrogen, which makes up almost 80% of all the gases in the atmosphere. Then we have oxygen, and then we have several other small quantities of gas, notwithstanding also ozone, which is the oxygen-3 molecule, which exists in the uh, stratosphere, and we'll talk about that in a later video. But just first the basics of how the atmosphere and the fact that photochemical reactions exist protect us from the dangerous ray coming from space. First of all, the three most dangerous rays coming from space is gamma rays, x-rays, and UV radiation. And specifically, UV radiation exists in various types. We have what we call the shortwave radiation from 110 to 100 nanometers. We have UV A, B, and C in in progressively shorter wavelengths or more energetic types of the UV radiation. We simply divide it like that because the way that radiation uh, reacts with the molecules in the atmosphere does allow us to separate it into these different kinds of UV radiation. Now the first line of defense in our atmosphere is the nitrogen molecule. And here we have a little picture of it. Nitrogen molecule is a diatomic molecule and because of the way the uh, electrons are rearranged around nitrogen. Each nitrogen atom only has five valence electrons. And of course, all atoms like to have eight valence electrons, at least atoms of that part of the periodic table. They like to have eight valence electrons in the outer uh, energy level. And so therefore, they have a sharing relationship where six, uh, three of each atom, or a total of six electrons, are shared in such a way that part of the time, this nitrogen atom has eight electrons, and part of the time, this nitrogen atom has eight electrons, roughly 50% of the time, so to speak. And because of that, they form what we call a covalent bond, or they form what we call a triple bond. Now, the energy of formation of a triple bond, uh, so the energy of formation, so the N2, if, for example, if you want to break up an N2 molecule, and we want to turn it into... 2 and uh, 2 uh, atoms of nitrogen gas and I have to take a look here because I forgot the exact so the enthalpy of formation so delta H of formation is equal to 946 kilojoules per mole so for each mole of nitrogen gas that gets dissociated into its individual nitrogen atoms, you require 947, 946 kilojoules for every mole. So how much energy does that require per atom? Well, if we take this number then and divide it by Avogadro's number, we have the energy it requires to split up a single molecule of nitrogen gas. So let's do that. So the energy for one nitrogen molecule is equal to 946,000 joules per mole divided by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd per mole. So that's the number of molecules per mole. So we take 946,000 and divide it by 6.02 e to the 23rd, and we get a total of 1.57 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. So that's the amount of energy you require, the quantum of energy, to come in and split up a single nitrogen molecule. Now that's really important for us. If it wasn't for that, if nitrogen molecules weren't triple bonded molecules needing that kind of energy to dissociate, we may not be able to live on the Earth. And let me show you in just a moment why. Okay, let's now figure out how much energy that is. So the energy of a photon, is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon. And since we know that frequency times wavelength is equal to the speed of light, so therefore F is equal to C divided by lambda, and we can plug that in here, we can say that the energy of a single photon is H C over lambda. And then if we go ahead and solve that for lambda, lambda is equal to H C over the energy of the photon. And H is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. 
C speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And the energy required is the energy that is needed to break up a nitrogen molecule, which is 1.57 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. And that will tell us what kind of wavelength is required in that photon. So we have 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8 and divided by 1.57 e to the 18 minus and we get 126.6 nanometers. So this is equal to 126.6 nanometers which is 126.6 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. All right so any photon coming into the atmosphere that has an energy or a wavelength of this many nanometers or shorter, that, that photon, when it hits nitrogen, will be absorbed and the nitrogen atoms will dissociate and will go out into the atmosphere as single atoms. The higher the energy of the photon, the more will be used to give them kinetic energy, but the, the minimum required to break it up is 126.6 nanometer photon, or an equivalent of 1.57 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. So, X-rays, gamma rays, and the very short wave radiation of UV radiation, when they hit nitrogen gas, those energies are absorbed, and the nitrogen molecule is associated in a photochemical reaction, keeping us safe. Now, what about the ones that have longer wavelengths like UVC, UVB, and UVA, they make it through the nitrogen, but there's other defense mechanisms in our atmosphere, which we'll show you in the very next video. Now, just to get a feel for it, there's also conversion factor from joules to electron volts. Sometimes we like to look at the energy of a photon in terms of an electron volt. Visible light is usually somewhere in the neighborhood of two or three electron volts for a photon. Let's take a look and see how much energy in electron volts one of these carries. So the energy, if this is equal to 1.57 times 10 to the minus 18 joules, we're going to convert that to electron volts. One electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So we take this number right here, 1.57 e to the 18 minus, and divide it by 1.6 e to the 19 minus, and we get 9.8 electron volts. So another way of looking at it is any photon coming in from space into the Earth's atmosphere that has an energy greater than 9.8 electron volts, it will be absorbed by this wonderful nitrogen molecule that will take that energy, dissociate itself into two nitrogen atoms, and thus protecting us from the dangerous rays of the universe. And there's a very nice example of photochemical reaction.